Welcome to the Virginia Association for Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as your facilitator for our session today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our amazing presenters at any point throughout our session today. Second, your camera and microphone are off, so we are not able to see or hear you. Third, this is just one of many different sessions that we're offering, so feel free to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded. You'll have access to that recording within about a week or so. With that said, I want to go ahead and introduce our first presenter, Slippery Rock, University of Pennsylvania. Thank you, and thanks for having me. Hello, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right. So my name is Sierra Bell. Thank you for attending tonight. I'm from Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania, um, Slippery Rock University. So Slippery Rock is a smaller town in Pennsylvania. So we are about one hour north of Pittsburgh, uh, about four and a half hours to DC, three hours to Niagara Falls, Canada, and two hours to Cleveland. We're known as a mid-sized institution. So we have about 8,800 students, but smaller class sizes. So only about 25 students on average in a class. So a lot of friendship opportunities, but there, then again, you also have that um, faculty member who really understands your career goals, knows your name, and is able to give you that individualized attention. We're in a smaller town, so the town is Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania, um, about 3,000 people in the town. So we sort of make up that community, and it's a bigger college town, I would say. The university makes that up. Um, we offer Division II sports, so there's going to be 10 for women and 7 for men. There are scholarships through the Division II um, athletics as well, but we also have club and intramural sports if you wouldn't like to play as competitively. We have over 160 different clubs and organizations, so we have everything from Harry Potter Club to video gaming club to board gaming club to hammock club, so there's something for everyone. These are some of our popular majors and our unique offerings. We started back in 1889 as an education college, and then we grew to include the College of Business, College of Health, Engineering, and Science, and the College of Liberal Arts. Health Engineering and Science is going to be its, our largest on campus. And then we also have an honors college and an honors scholarship as well for students to participate in. We have over 150 different academic programs. And what we do really well is we partner some of those undergraduate programs with the graduate programs. So you would be able to do um, some of those accelerated tracks. If you're interested in athletic training, physician assistant studies, physical therapy, you can actually get your doctorate degree in physical therapy or occupational therapy in six years by doing a combination of the undergraduate program. And then you transition into that doctoral program. So it's a three plus three. So we're really excited to be able to offer those to our students. The cost for attending Slippery Rock. So we are on a flat tuition rate, so anywhere from 12 to 18 credits is the same. For a PA resident, it's $7,716, the same as what it was back in 2018. So we've stayed consistent, um, plus the fees. So that's what you see here. But for an out-of-state student, since you're from Virginia, we would be um, doubling that. So that's 200% of the tuition rate plus the fees. But you'll notice this column here, if you have a 3.5, GPA or higher on your final high school transcript, you would actually be considered for the out-of-state tuition reduction, which brings you back to 150% of the tuition rate plus the fees. And you'll see room and board. Our most common are the residential suites, the double studio. Those are more of an apartment style living where you have bed, bed, bathroom, kitchen snack prep area. Some of them have shared living rooms, shared kitchens, shared balconies. We also have the traditional halls, which are $3,000 more affordable than the residential suites. And for the traditional halls, it's communal bathrooms shared between 20 to 25 other people. And then you'll see the respective totals. So actually, if you're an out-of-state student with a 3.0 GPA or higher, and you're living in the traditional halls, you could actually get to about $700 difference of what a PA resident would be paying in the res suites. So we can get you pretty close and board does include a meal plan for you as well. We do have an increase in our out-of-state tuition um, reduction and out-of-state scholarships. So we had an increase in our out-of-state students. And so because of that, 
we have more out of state scholarships that we can offer to students this year. So it's a great time to apply. Um, actually, if you're interested in applying and you're a current senior, what we would recommend is getting everything in by May 1st, which is National College Decision Day. We are test optional. And so all you need to send is your online application, the $30 fee, and then your transcripts need to be sent by a counselor or by the school secretary. Um, there's an online application to apply, but not on the Common App. Okay, so it's our own application system. We are open right now if you would like to come and visit us. So we actually have visits every single day, Monday through Friday, and on select Saturdays also. If you're an admitted student, you'll be able to attend our admitted student day. We have one this Saturday and also one on the 24th, so another Saturday. You can register for that here on our visit page, but we always have opportunities for students to come to campus. And we actually also have opportunities to do a virtual presentation if you were interested in um, visiting virtually this year. Scholarship information. We have a first year scholarship application that is one five minute application that you have to submit and it actually considers you for all of our donor scholarships. So if you are interested in that, I would consider, I would recommend you looking on the scholarship website and filling that out if you're a current senior. Your application is gonna come out in the summer if you are currently a junior, and then you will have until May 1st to get everything in of your senior year. And if you're interested in exploring some of our different majors, we have that information as well. We have the academic catalog online where you can explore all of the courses that you would be taking for your particular major as well. And we have some faculty information sessions that'll be coming again next, um, next fall and spring. We just finished our last one last night where you would be able to speak with a faculty member and ask specific questions about your major. So that's something that we have as well. If you have any questions, um, this is my contact information. So sierra.bell at sru.edu. I'm more than happy to welcome you and to walk you through this process, to welcome you to campus. But please um, feel free to reach out and thank you for attending. Thank you so much, Slippery Rock. Up next, we have the University of California, Irvine. Hello everybody, thanks for your time tonight. I am with the University of California, Irvine, and I have a beautiful campus that I get to represent. I'm part of the UC system, so that means that all the other campuses you see listed on that state of California there, we all share our application, we share our study abroad, we share a lot of things. We also share that we're some of the top public schools in the country. Uh, UCI is fortunate to be ranked in the top 10 in the country, but we also do it in a beautiful location. So we're about 10 minutes from Newport Beach with 75 and sunny weather pretty much year round. Some other great attractions in the area were only about 20 minutes to Disneyland. Uh, we have hiking and biking, uh, thousands of miles of trails. We have great opportunities to do uh, beach bonfires, but also we have one of the best uh, ski or one of the, our biggest clubs is a ski and snowboard club. So you can literally be skiing on the, in the morning and then at the beach surfing that night. So it's just a really great, beautiful location that we have. Something that's unique about our campus is that we were built in a circle. So we're a pretty large university, as you can see by the numbers there, but it doesn't feel large as you walk around. It only takes about 20 minutes to walk from one side of that circle all the way through that park to the other. The larger circle that you see is a perfect one mile circle to all of your academic buildings at UCI. So you get to walk around the circle, through the park to get to your classes. By being in a circle and by having these paths through the park, we really make it so that you see familiar faces and it's a friendly place to be. Uh, so I think you'll find that our students are pretty friendly and collaborative, kind of by design. Part of that is the circular approach that we've made our campus in. Our campus was also only 55 years old. So when we built the campus, we built it in a way that it would be easy to get around. We would also build it in a way that it's easy for our professors to do things in an interdisciplinary way. So we really encourage our professors to think outside of just their kind of their school or their department, they get to collaborate with professors across campus and we make it easy for you to do that as a student as well. 
So what does that look like? Well, that looks like majoring in one of our many, many majors. Uh, we have over 80 majors for 70 different minors on our campus, so lots to choose from. But we're probably best known in the biology, pre-med, pre-health field. Um, everything kind of in that first column there is what we're really well known for. We have our own hospital, we have our own medical school, so lots of opportunities for that. We also do a ton of undergraduate research. If you're thinking about medical school, undergrad research is a great thing to put on your resume uh, so that when you apply to medical school, they, they really see that you've already started to work in a lab and those other types of ways. The other area that we're probably best known in is our computer science and engineering schools. So we're the only UC campus with a full school of computer science seven different majors, 13 in our School of Engineering. All of these will offer some sort of senior design project where a nearby company comes, they hire our students to solve some sort of problem, and then our students often get hired right from that program. So it's a really great opportunity for them to build their resume while they're in school. Other top programs, we have a, one of only three business schools in the UC system. We offer 14 languages, a top 10 dance program, a top five criminology major, just to name a few. Other ways to build your resume, uh, we are in a, this great location. So not only is it great weather, but um, Irvine's a large city. So it's a city not many folks have heard of outside of California, but it's a large city with one third of all Fortune 500 companies. So a lot of opportunities for internships. And because of kind of our curriculum and our approach to teaching and learning, we partner with those uh, businesses in town to help provide internships for our students and other ways to build their resume. Over 70% of our students do undergraduate research, and we also have these great study away programs, whether that's in another country through study abroad or in Washington, D.C., so back in your backyard. Uh, we own a building in Washington, D.C. It houses about 150 students each year. Many of them do internships on Capitol Hill or at a Smithsonian Institute, lots of places to do that. Great way to network and make connections uh, back on the East Coast. We are the only anteaters in the whole country. Uh, so we're really proud of our mascot. This is a big source of school pride. It is really uh, a lot about our school spirit. So our school spirit doesn't necessarily have to do with a sport, although we are a D1 uh, school. We also have one of the best esports programs in the country. We have over 600 clubs. We do great talent shows with our dance crews and our acapella singing groups. Um, so lots of school spirit that's not just sports. It's a lot bigger than that. The picture you see here is actually from the world's largest dodgeball game. Uh, UCI holds four Guinness World Records and uh, we try to set a new one each year. So just kind of a fun fact. Being part of the UC system means we share our application with all the UCs. So when you apply to the University of California system, you fill out one application. That application is due in November of your senior year. We'll let you know in March, and then you have to let us know by May 1st uh, whether or not you plan to attend. When you fill out that application, you'll spend $70 for each UC campus that you wanna be considered at. We do build fee waivers right into that application. Something important to note, two things actually, as an out-of-state student, you need at least a 3.4 weighted GPA. And um, this year, the UC system will not be using SAT or ACT scores for admissions selection or scholarship. Finally, here is my contact info. Feel free to take a picture of the screen. I'll also type the link in the chat. Um, on that page, you can sign up for one-on-one -on -one appointments or campus presentations to learn a little bit more. Thank you for your time today and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, UCI. Our next presenter is Pacific Northwest College of Art. Thank you, Jasmine. Hello everyone, my name is Kara Cirillo. I'm an admissions counselor here at Pacific Northwest College of Art. We are located in Portland, Oregon. We're a fine art and visual arts school. Um, so we're a member of the ACAD Association, which is the Association of Independent Colleges of Art and Design. Um, that's basically a consortium of 39 different art schools here in the US and Canada. Um, this is our main campus building. This is the interior of the building. It was built in 1916, <clears throat> intended as the original post office for the city of Portland. We moved in a few years ago and made some renovations, but kept the nice Baroque ceiling. Um, in the foreground is our mission statement, which I'll go ahead and read. So PNCA empowers artists and designers to reimagine what art and design can do in the world. Our students do that by balancing studies in the humanities and sciences that are uniquely tailored to students in an art college with hands-on art making in studios and labs. Our students have 11 different majors to choose from and eight minors, and we have a really interdisciplinary curriculum 
curriculum. So you're not gonna be tied down to your one major and we do encourage experimentation and cross collaboration. Um, most recently, we announced a merger with Willamette University. So hopefully by June, we'll be known as the Pacific Northwest College of Art at Willamette University. Nothing's going to change as far as our faculty, our programs, our facilities. <clears throat> What, real, what we really hope to get from this is an expansion of resources for our students, um, giving them access to the wider Willamette system, um, as well as expanding the courses we offer here at PNCA. Um, so I'll just briefly go over our majors. So we do have a creative writing and a printmaking major, um, a general fine arts and painting major. Um, we do have a sculpture and intermedia major and sculpture, I should note, is located on a different part of campus. It's located in the glass building, which is about 15 minutes from our main campus building. And that's where we would house our wood shops, our metal shops, our ceramic studios, as well as our industrial textile facilities for soft sculpture and fashion. Um, we do have two client-based majors and that's gonna be illustration and graphic design. So in addition to learning how to become great illustrators and great graphic designers, this curriculum is sort of imbued with the sense that you're gonna learn how to navigate a really creative marketplace. Um, to sort of reach out to those industries within Portland. Um, we also have an animated arts major, and I should note that Portland, Oregon, and Bristol, England are sort of the two international hubs for experimental animation. We're surrounded by a bunch of great independent studios, such as Leica, which did work for, which produced Coraline, Kubo, and the Two Strings. Um, we also have Bent Image Lab and Shadow Machine here in Portland, um, which is a great pool for our students. Um, and lastly, we have two majors um, in video and sound and one in photography. These are our minors, which I'll go ahead and read. So art and ecology, art history, ceramics, creative writing, drawing, fashion, game, and graphic design. Um, all of our students take what's called a foundations year. And this is basically to round out the class in terms of getting them, giving them the experience they need to experience other classes they might not have had the chance to take in high school. Um, and this is really to prepare you for your sophomore year when you decide what medium and what major you're gonna be going into and kind of give you time to experiment and discover new ways of making before you hone in on your practice. We have a really unique thesis year because we take a kind of graduate approach to an undergraduate thesis. So once a one week every semester, we take a break from classes so that all of our seniors can present in a sort of symposium style. Um, and your first semester senior year, you'll be presenting your thesis and your second semester you'll be defending it um, and that's open to the public and we kind of see it as a springboard of sorts from student to professional artist and designer. Um, critique is gonna be really integral to your time here at PNCA. Everything you make is gonna be critiqued and that'll really help you build the verbiage and articulation you need to talk about your work, um, but also help explain it to other people and it'll come in really handy when it comes to jobs um, as well as galleries and residencies. Um, our faculty is amazing. They're made up of internationally, nationally, and locally renowned artists, and they're all practicing professional artists and designers. So they're a great part to have in your network, but also um, everyone at PNC is gonna be an artist. So it's really a community of creatives that thrives on collaboration and community. So this is Art House, our first year dorming. It's located about five minutes from our main campus building. It's apartment style dorms. So each one is gonna come with its own kitchen, its own in-unit washer and dryer. Um, yeah, it's not gonna be your typical college dorming. Um, we do have a fabrication studio where we explore the intersection between art and technology. Um, Let's see. And this is our Bridge Lab Career Services Center, and they'll help you get internships. Um, and that's just a short list of where our students have interned at. And most, more often than not, these internships do lead to jobs, but they'll also help you with like pra professional practices, sort of the nitty gritty things you'll need to do to become a successful artist, such as learning how to file your taxes, um, negotiating contracts, um, and grant writing. So our application is super straightforward. We don't have an application fee. So I always tell students to just apply. Um, the bulk of your application is gonna be your portfolio, which is gonna be 50, 10 to 15 images of your strongest work, up to 10 pages of writing samples um, and an artist statement, which is optional, as well as high school and college transcripts. We also offer all merits. Every admitted student is gonna get a merit scholarship ranging from 10,000 to $20,000 a year. Um, thank you guys so much. Thank you.
Before I introduce our next presenter, I want to just remind all of our attendees, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in that Q&A section um, within the Zoom. With that said, our next presenter is the University of Dundee. That's great. Thank you very much. I'll just share my screen. There we go. Hopefully you can see that okay. So we provide maybe a little bit of a different option to um, the, the other universities that are on display today. So you can hopefully tell from my accent that we are not from the USA. We are from Scotland, which is in the United Kingdom. So what I'll do is I will start off quite broadly and speak about Scotland and why Scotland is a little bit different maybe to the USA or even the rest of the United Kingdom um, and then I'll narrow down a lot more into Dundee. Um, if I do talk too fast please let me know in the chat as a Scotsman we do have a habit of talking quite fast when we're pushed for time but hopefully you can understand me throughout the duration of this presentation. So why come to study in Scotland when there is so many univer great universities not just in this session, but all around the world. In Scotland, we have a really great thriving arts and culture scene. So not far from us is the capital city of Edinburgh, which has the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. In a normal year, that is the one of the largest festivals in the whole world and attracts thousands and hundreds of thousands of people to Edinburgh from around the world. And that is literally on our doorstep. We have stunning landscapes. I'm extremely biased, but I feel Scotland has some of the, the best scenery anywhere in the world. Um, and that again, and no matter where you go to study, in Scotland really is on your doorstep. We're very friendly people. Again, I sound incredibly big headed here, um, but especially if you are coming from the USA, we have great heritage with the USA. So anyone coming from the US to study in Scotland is always going to be given a really warm welcome. Um, we have lots of international acclaimed music and cultural festivals, and we have a really flexible degree structure. So I'll speak about that very briefly in the next slide. The degree structure in Scotland was actually based, um, or the US structure, I should say, was actually based off of the Scottish structure. So we have some of the, the oldest universities in the whole world. We have four ancient universities in Scotland. So when I speak about the Scottish degree structure, you will notice a lot of similarities with the US college structure. So we have a four year degree in Scotland that is slightly different to the rest of the United Kingdom who study for three years. So in Scotland, slightly different, you don't really study any gen ed classes. So anything that you study are going to be modules and subjects that you pick and that you probably are interested in. So as an example here, in your first and second year, you'll be able to take up to three different subjects each semester. So subject one could be history, two politics, three philosophy. You might study all three subjects for your first two years. Now in your first two years for most subjects and in most universities in Scotland, including Dundee, it doesn't count towards your final GPA or your final degree classification. So you can pick subjects you might never have done before just to experience them. And if you do enjoy them, you can continue them. And then if your second year, that's when you make your final degree choice. So you can decide whether to do a single honours that is studying one subject in a lot of detail for your last two years, or you can do a joint honours. This is slightly different to a major and a minor. This is more a double major. So you'll study two subjects dedicated 50% of your time. So there is some great opportunities if you are looking to come to Scotland. Obviously, if you are looking to study a professional degree in the UK, you can actually study medicine and dentistry as an undergraduate student, and that will tend to be a five or a six year course. But those opportunities are there for you. But obviously, they will follow maybe a slightly different structure um, to what I've just shown you there, but certainly the humanities and the social sciences will fall under this. So I am from the University of Dundee, which is based in the city of Dundee. And Dundee as a city has been named Scotland's best place to live. And there's a few reasons for this. So one of the reasons is that we are one of the sunniest cities in Scotland. People always think when they picture Scotland, they don't tend to think of the sun. They maybe think of rain and clouds. And that does make our landscape very dramatic. Um, but Dundee is very much noticeably sunnier um, than some other places in the UK. We're also a very affordable city to live in as well. So your money just goes a little bit further. And we're not a large city either. So we have around 150,000 people in our city and one in seven are actually students. So it makes us one of the most densely student populated cities in the whole of Europe. So that really adds in to the student experience that you have in Dundee. 
Now, I'm sure many of you will probably not have heard of Dundee in Scotland, but there's a lot that Dundee has actually given the world. So Dundee is named as the United Kingdom's City of Discovery. So in Dundee, we have pioneered aspirin, we pioneered LCD technology in the University of Dundee. So if you're watching this on a phone or a tablet or a computer screen, um, that is technology will be pioneered by ourselves in the University of Dundee. Grand Theft Auto, which I'm sure many of you will have heard of or even played, um, came from Dundee. So Rockstar North came out of Dundee and DMCA Designs. Um, Marmalade Stamps, the list goes on, but there really is a lot that Dundee is known for and, and we're extremely proud of as well. So the University of Dundee is a top 20 university in the UK. We're 11th in the UK for student satisfaction and 14th in the whole world for international student satisfaction. And that is incredibly important to us. It's important when students come from around the world to Dundee that they're really having a great student experience. And that is shown throughout all four years of your course as well with the opportunities avail available for you in an academic sense, but also in a social sense as well. We have gone test optional for September 2021 entry, and it's very likely we'll maintain that flexibility into 2022 entry as well. And we have rolling admissions with a direct application for no fee, and we have scholarships of up to £5,000 available for students from the USA. We have a city-based campus, everything you see within this picture is very much our campus, so it's walkable, it takes around five minutes from the start to the end of our campus, so everything is going to be available for you. And we have plenty of societies and sport clubs available for you as well. I think my time is up, so I'll just skip to the last slide. Here are my contact details, so if you do have any further information you would like to know about Dundee, then please do get in touch using those details there. But thank you very much for your time. Thank you, University of Dundee. Our next presenter is Ryder University. Well, thank all of you for um, coming today. I really appreciate it. I'm just trying to share my screen so that you can all hopefully see it. Uh, I don't seem to be having much luck. Okay, we'll continue with that. Ryder University is located in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. We're about one hour from um, York and about an hour from Philadelphia. So our location has been um, known to be one of our outstanding features since it's accessible to students from all over, either by car, by train, or by plane. Uh, we're considered a small to medium sized university. Um, we have a student body of 3,200 and 75% uh, of them live on campus. Um, we're, we started as a business school back in 1865 and have grown into a liberal arts university. Um, obviously our business programs are one of our better known programs as well as our um, uh, theater and performance fine and performing arts. Given our location to Philadelphia and New York, it's obvious why students um, come there and why we're able to attract so many wonderful professors. Communications and journalism having uh, roots in New York for us also have been very, very strong, as well as the sciences, especially health sciences. Since we're located in really the pharmaceutical capital of New Jersey, um, right in our community is Janssen Pharmaceutical, Johnson & Johnson, Bristol Myers Squibb, and up the road is Merck. So uh, we have two major health centers near us. So our health science, health administration students all have ample opportunity to do internships as well as co-ops. Um, let's get to the nitty gritty about entrance into Rider. Everybody has been talking. rider has been SAT optional for the past five years. So we had no problem when COVID unfortunately hit, managing that because that's what we've always expected. Um, you can submit your SATs and ACTs. The average last year was an 1100, ACT was a 23, and the average GPA is a 3.6. The good news is that we're on the common application and you only need to do one application with respect to um, getting into Rider as well as uh, scholarships. When we read your application, 
We also then um, read it for your scholarships. The better your grades, the higher the scholarship. So our scholarships range anywhere from $10,000 a year to $20,000 a year with 10 full paid scholarships. Starting next year, um, the board of directors saw that tuitions were getting higher and higher. They've reduced the cost at Ryder by 22%. Our tuition has been reduced to 35,000 plus room and board. So for $50,000 tuition room and board, you can be a student at um, Ryder University. One of the other things that they have started is what's called the student navigation office. You'll be assigned someone who'll be able to work with you and answer any questions that you may have, no matter how big or how small. Every student has an academic advisor, but this person can help you with the nitty gritty, like where is the bursar's office? How am I going to um, pick up my books that I ordered? Anything similar to that. So that if you do go away from home, there is somebody that you can always touch base with, which is really sort of important. We are a division one school, but we have no football. Uh, basketball is our uh, big sport and uh, everybody rallies around that. Uh, soccer in the fall, um, in the spring is baseball. Um, but we've been, uh, our wrestling team this year, first time made it into the uh, finals and we're really proud of them and their um, efforts along the way. The other thing is that um, not only are there things to do around in the community where Ryder's located, but on campus. The activities group goes a, works really hard at making sure that they bring things to our students to keep them um, occupied and entertained while they're at school and they have some free time. Even during um, the pandemic, they were able to figure out virtually to think, keep things going. Writer has been written about by many magazines for what they call the um, R Factor. Years ago, there was a program, the X Factor. It's one, uh, a singing program and um, student, um, people were selected and, and one went on to be quite famous. We called it the R Factor and every year we have more students sign up to try out than um, the year before. And it's been written about in um, the Princeton Review and other such uh, magazines that critique colleges. So we're, we're rather proud of the activities that we're able to bring our students as well as the wonderful um, education. 95% of our students have jobs upon graduating or um, have opted to go on to graduate school. So that's a rather impressive number after you spend so much money and time trying to figure out your future. Um, I will put my information in the chat so all of you can contact me. I am the uh, regional representative for uh, Virginia, so I would be your first line of contact. Thanks so much. Thank you, Ryder University. Our next presenter is Georgia State. Thank you, Jasmine. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Alex Thomas. I have the pleasure of serving as the Assistant Director of Admissions at Georgia State University. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen now. And for, for those of you who aren't super familiar with Georgia State, uh, we're located in downtown Atlanta, so it's very much an urban campus. It's now the largest university in the state of Georgia, uh, we have close to about 54,000 students across all of our campuses. At our main campus in downtown, we have about 33,000 students. And then about four years ago, we consolidated with what was then known as uh, Georgia Premier College. It was the largest two-year institution in the state. And so we now have a two-year community college under our larger umbrella of a research university. Um, so to give you a little bit more background, Georgia State was founded in 1913. We started out as a small business school under Georgia Tech, which is literally a less than a mile away from our campus in Midtown Atlanta. And now we've grown to the fastest growing research university in the entire country. Uh, so we are classified as a Carnegie One Research University, which means that you have plenty of opportunities to do research as early as day one in your freshman year. So you don't have to wait until your upperclassmen or um, wait until you're in grad school to actually participate in research. Your professors are actually uh, actively doing research as well, and they're typically gonna be experts in their fields. We're also one of the most diverse universities in the entire country. So we have students coming from all 159 Georgia counties. 
all 50 US states in over 150 different countries across the globe. Um, we're actually very unique where a majority of our students on campus identify as students of color, uh, which is really unique considering the size of the university. And we're also the top, the top public university for our commitment to undergraduate teaching. Um, we offer over 250 different majors at Georgia State um, and 10 different colleges and schools. I won't go into detail about each one. Um, I don't really like to say we have a particular top major. One thing I will say is that Georgia State does a really good job staying connected with uh, growing industries and what are some of the um, biggest job needs, not only in the Atlanta community, but also across the Southeast and in, in, in the US. And so over the past few years, we developed um, several programs that are really unique. For example, uh, we started our Creative Media Industry Institute, or what we call the CMII for short. And it's a state-of-the-art facility on our campus that has all the technology that you would typically see in a Hollywood film studio. Uh, so right now, Atlanta is quickly becoming the Hollywood of the South. There's a $6 billion film and TV industry. So we're getting students connected uh, to employers on both sides of the camera. So no matter if you're interested in filmmaking or if you're interested in acting or film production, um, you definitely have access to state-of-art laboratories. We have two virtual reality labs, soundboard, CGI technology, everything you, you would need is right there on our campus. Um, we also have a couple of schools that are gated. So um, our Robinson College of Business has several programs and ranking in top 25 nationally, including finance, accounting, marketing, and hospitality management. And also our Lewis College of Nursing and Health Professions has one of the passage rates uh, for the state certification exam in order to be a registered nurse. Um, we also have an honors college at Georgia State, which has great uh, opportunities for students to do internships and study abroad as well. There's 16 NCAA Division I athletic teams at Georgia State. In this picture here, you will see uh, what is now known as Center Park Stadium. It was formerly known as Turner Field when it was the home of the Atlanta Braves, which is the MLB team here in Atlanta. Um, so our football team is only about 10 years old. We compete Division I level in the Southern Conference, um, in the Sunbelt Conference, excuse me. And you'll notice that some of our biggest rivals include Appalachian State and Georgia Southern, just to name a couple. Um, but we have 16 sports all together. And even if you aren't interested in competing on the Division One level, we have a host of club and intramural sports as well. There's a little under 6,000 students who are currently living on campus. Uh, we have six residence halls all together and three of them are reserved for freshmen. As you can kind of see in this background picture here, again, we are urban campus. We like to promote ourselves as a campus without borders. So it definitely creates a unique experience where students um, have access to over a dozen different Fortune 500 companies that have headquarters in downtown Atlanta. And I do have a short 40 second video just to give you a little bit of a sneak peek to our campus housing at Georgia State. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of a sneak peek to our on-campus housing. Um, just to give you an idea of our academic profile, you'll see here that we have um, students, we are test optional. A majority of our students have GPAs that fall between a 3.3, 3.8. It's also not too late to apply. Our application deadline was extended to May 1st. Um, so if you still have not made a decision for college yet for the fall, it's not too late to apply. But if you are a junior, uh, typically our priority deadline is December 8th. 
Lots of scholarship opportunities for out-of-state students. We do have a Campus Atlanta scholarship that waives your out-of-state tuition portion, but that is based on academic merit. And you can always feel free to go to our website or email me at wthomas23 at gsu.edu if you have any more questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Georgia State. With that said, that concludes the presentation portion of our college fair today. But now we are going to go ahead and transition um, over to our Q&A. Um, so I would encourage you all, if you have any questions, feel free to type those questions in that Q&A section. In the meantime, I wanna encourage all of our amazing panelists, feel free to return, turn your cameras back on. And I am gonna pose a question to each of you while our attendees um, are typing their questions. And you will respond in the order in which you present it. So we'll start with Slippery Rock. The question is, give an interesting or fun fact about your school. Sure, so for Slippery Rock, um, I know it's an interesting name already, and we actually have a rock in the middle of campus. And if you rub the rock, um, you are predicted to graduate in the four years. So I would say that's one of our uh, fun facts from Slippery Rock. Uh, fun fact, I know I mentioned that we're the anteaters, but we do this little cheer and we do this. It's supposed to look like a little anteater and we go zot, zot, zot. And we cheer this at everything, uh, esports events and sporting events and graduation. And when I'm at a college fair and someone knows about Irvine, they'll come up and do this. So it's just a fun little, almost like secret handshake. It's pretty fun. So another mascot fun fact, our mascot at PNCA is a sloth. Um, their name is Salami and their pronouns are they, them. Um, I think our fun fact would be that Jay-Z's dentist actually practiced and learned at the University of Dundee. I've not seen Jay-Z's teeth, so I'm not sure what that says, but it's a, a fun fact. Um, our fun fact is that um, our colors are uh, cranberry and gray, and the reason they're cranberry is our founder, Andrew J. Ryder, owned cranberry bogs in the state of New Jersey. And our fun fact is uh, that the Coca-Cola was founded in Atlanta. And so the pharmacy where Coca-Cola was first sold literally has a monument right in front of our business school. And as you can imagine, the university has a great partnership with Coca-Cola. So we have freestyle machines that you can literally have like 200 different flavors in our dining hall of Coca-Cola and different soda mixes. And everything we drink down here in Atlanta, we just call it Coke. So it doesn't matter if it's Pepsi or whatever, we just call it Coke. <laughs> Nice, nice. Thank you all for sharing. Um, another question here. And again, feel free to respond in the order in which you presented. Um, so we'll start with Slippery Rock. What is your favorite event or tradition on I would say the international dinner. I actually used to work in the um, international department, so in global engagement. And that's just a really fun opportunity for our domestic students, our community, and our international students to really see um, all of the different cultures on campus that are represented. So all of our international students choose um, a small group and they cook something from their region. And so it's just a nice opportunity to be able to taste little things from all over the world. Our students are dressed up in their traditional clothing as well. And then there's entertainment. So some of our students sing or dance. We had the Afro-Columbian Dance Ensemble um, perform their number. So I would say that's one of my favorite events. And we have had it every year for the past uh, 40 plus years. I think we're on our 47th year. So that's something from Slippery Rock that I hope you would be able to attend or look forward to. My favorite event on campus is our Welcome Week. So this is the few days before school starts. We have all sorts of events, including a mega audition. So we have 10 uh, major uh, musical theater or theater productions each year. So everyone auditions during that week. It's also when you get to know your hallmates and your roommates and all that kind of stuff too. But it's uh, pretty cool that we have this mega audition and then you're placed into all the performances throughout the year, even if you're not a drama major. My favorite event on campus has to be Focus Week because it really is a time for you to see what everyone has done with their time at PNCA and people really elevate their work um, 
two really professional degrees um, and it's a great community kind of engagement thing too uh, where we all get together and just kind of celebrate our seniors. I think ours would be in a lot of different subjects you have academic family so in your first year you'll normally be assigned academic parents and then by the time you reach your third or fourth year then you have academic children so it's a great networking through every year of your course where you get to meet people that have already went through um, your course it's a great way to, to kind of network with different people. To sort of um, piggyback on uh, my fun fact my favorite event would be Cranberry Fest, which is always towards the end of the first week of school. Um, all the activities um, are represented out on campus. There are all these various food events and food trucks that come to campus as well as activities that the kids can do. And it's a way for, especially the freshmen to start to meld in with the community. And my favorite event on campus is our GSU Film Festival that happens every spring. So we have a lot of students who are independent filmmakers and aspiring filmmakers. And it's really cool to see um, the level of production that they put into their short films. Nice, nice. Thank you all for sharing um, those fun facts um, about your school. With that said, that concludes our virtual college fair for today, but I do have a few closing announcements. Um, so as you exit from our Zoom session today, a survey will appear. It's approximately four questions or so, but please complete the survey. It is very useful and helpful for us as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings in the future. Also wanna remind you that you can sign up for additional sessions by visiting that registration site. And finally, a recording will be available within about a week or so. Um, so feel free to visit tribescan.com slash Virginia. With that said, I want to thank our amazing presenters for sharing tonight. But I also want to thank all of our attendees for joining us. I hope everyone has a great evening. Thank you so much.